Um, first of all, we are going to put ponies um, into their stalls. Then we're going to take this gate down and then we're going to grab Frog and Toad and bring them in and get it over her nose first. So put the nose into the, into the circle and then you can run it up and over her ears. Boink. Put this in the crook of your arm and just put your hand right here and then it kind of frames her. Then all you have to do is grab this way and then you pretty much got her. All right, Frog and Toad can enter the building. Hi boys, looking so handsome. So when we come into our barn in the morning, what's the first thing that we, that we wanna do? So we just brought our animals in, that's great. They're standing here eating before I start to do any checklist type items. What am I just observing? What are they both doing right now? They're eating, right? Seems obvious, um, but what's the first thing a ruminant with a, you know, that's not feeling great is gonna stop doing? Yeah, both cattle and horses, right? They're herd animals. So are they gonna wanna show us when they're feeling sick? No, so if they're feeling at all, you know, nervous, they're gonna try to hide any injuries they may have. So a time when they're relaxed and eating is the best time to see it, because they may show it. So when they're feeling secure and just sort of calm. But we'll do our initial respiratory rate out here, and then when you get close to them, you can actually put your hand on their body wall, and that makes it a lot easier. But you can take one out here, and this is gonna tell you, are we in the range of normal or abnormal? As we mentioned yesterday, right, cattle have a pretty small lung field. So if they even have a little bit of damage, like they've got a tiny bit of pneumonia, any sort of lung consolidation, you're gonna notice it because they don't really have a lot of reserve lung versus the horses. They can have a good piece damaged and they can still kind of function at a, you know, at 100%. Now we can just go from sort of top to bottom. So for those of you that have not um, done your weight tape before, so this is a dairy calf weight tape. Very likely this will not even be large enough for these two. So we're gonna have to extrapolate a little bit, but we're gonna be close enough. So you're gonna go on this side, you're gonna wrap it around their body at what location? Do you remember where this should go? We call it the heart girth. So if you were putting it on yourself, you would put it right here. So the equivalent on them is right behind the front leg. And then for a G turn, what you can do, you can stand in front and then hold your goad. And what you're gonna do, step up one frog. We're gonna get him to come up maybe one step and then I'm gonna show him where I want him to be. In woo, good boy. So what we're gonna do is because we do not have enough length, we are going to do farm hack, which is we are going to take our string and measure from the end down to here. And then we are going to add the pounds that we have missed. So like we said, it's a little bit hard to um, assess respiratory rate unless you're touching them. So if you have not already filled in your respiratory rate or if you're not confident that you did, you're just gonna stand here and you're gonna watch him breathe. And sometimes it does help to have your hand here and you can sort of appreciate, you can feel the rise and fall. Yeah, so the height we can actually do, so right from the floor, right to the withers. So we can record that. Good, and then obviously just mind that your toe is not getting squashed. And then try to just read straight across. So perhaps we will put Toad back in his spot. Good boy. So maybe kind of position yourself so you can sort of see when I pick up his lip and we'll see how he feels about this whole little game. What's on top? Does he have teeth? top teeth right there? What does he have? Yep, a, a dental pad. So he's chewing. So I'm going to pick it up here, see if you can appreciate the fact that he has a dental pad right here and no top teeth, right? Mm -hmm. So all he has is his little incisors down there. And then you can see on his lips, if you can appreciate those really cool papillae sticking out and how large they are. Mm -hmm. And you see that. So if you want to take a feel, you certainly may. And kind of like we mentioned, right, there's that space or diastema where you're not going to get your hand bitten off. Another thing we always do with cattle and even horses is you just take a smell of their breath. Seems weird. Um, why would I do that? So if it was quite bad, so if he's 
breathing heavily, you're kind of wondering like, huh, is there something going on here? You're going to smell there. Instead of like a sweet hay smell, you're going to smell gross, yucky smell. And it's cool because the inside of their cheek feels really awesome. Yeah, so you can just as well just make it a practice to sort of look in their eyes because number one, their eyes are beautiful. But you just want to get near each of them and just take a look and make sure right, that they haven't bumped their eye on anything, that there's not a lot of tearing and that there aren't any funny colors there. Because what can they get like we can get that makes your eyes all itchy and weird? Pink eye, yeah. Um, and then ears, same thing, just kind of come on up, touch the ears, kind of look inside. You can sort of see membrane color inside of here too. Um, so make sure it's like sort of the same pinkish color um, as the mucous membranes here. Make sure he doesn't have any cuts. There's no, you know, flies or ticks or anything else down there and that he's not painful at all when you're touching around his ears. And again, this is just sort of like a great desensitization tool for your friend here. So any of those pink surfaces, those are fed by capillaries. So the way we're gonna do it is on him. It's not as obvious in a cow mouth, um, but what we can do is kind of take his cheek and I'm just gonna poke my thumb. It's gonna turn white. And then I'm gonna wait for the pink color to come back and it should be less than two seconds. And that's just telling me that he's got enough perfusion that that blood's gonna come right back in. So this one, we're gonna use our stethoscope so what I'm going to do, the stethoscope, you can see my name on it. So you're going to have my name pointing out. So you're going to walk up to his left hand side. And just before you do this, just take your hand and run it up and under his elbow so you can kind of appreciate how far up you need to get. So if someone wants to put that in their ears, and hopefully he'll stand here for a second. And tell me if you can hear two sound. You're going to hear lub dub, lub dub, lub dub. And you're also going to hear other things. <laughs> this is room and echoes throughout. So you're going to hear funny digestive noises and it's also overlaid with his lungs. He's got kind of a ridge that runs down um, in the middle of his tail. And what you're going to do is you're just going to put your fingertips kind of into it. You're going to feel because it's a little um, a ridge between his tail bones and you're going to lay your fingers on it and put a little bit of pressure and then slowly let off and you're going to start to feel the pulse and this is a true pulse so every beat is one heartbeat and then you can take it and actually this is a really nice way um, to just take it pretty easily so see if you can actually get the pulse number so the place we listen for the rumen is called the paralumbar fossa and on him that's the spot right about here but you can actually see all right this is the that's the curve of his rumen sticking out and that's why he's laying like that it's comfortable so you can actually just stick your ear, so get in a comfortable spot and just stick your ear and your face on it. You can use them like a little cow pillow. And you're going to hear the rumen cycle and you're going to feel it. It'll press your head up and then it'll also make a cool um, wave sound and that's also a nice pillow moment. So try that. So these guys ruminate 24 seven. Their rumen is cycling always, um, no matter what their mouth is doing. So you always wanna be able to make sure you hear that. So that's a, that's a key ruminant feature that the rumen should always be moving. Yeah, so this is just a reminder that don't forget the whole animal looking at the small details. So, you know, use your hands and start to just feel down and sort of in your mind name the joints for yourself. So I've got, you know, shoulder, elbow, knee, and I just want you to feel down on the front and back. All right, what else we got? Oh, uh, temperature. So basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna approach, you're gonna stand right next to him and you're just gonna whoop. You're gonna pop the thermometer in there and wait till it beeps and then you're gonna read out the temperature. 